This is John T for the Boxing Voice. And tonight I've got British middleweight champion Denzel Bentley. It flows off, mate. It sounds good. No, it sounds good. I like the way it sounds too. <laughs> Still smiling. Has it sunk in yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's sunk in now. I know who I am now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I bet the popularity and people wanting some time with you has gone through the roof, is it? Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been mad. But I've gotten used to it over you know, the time. So I think I can adjust to the new fame. Yeah, I bet. I bet you're loving it knowing you, mate. Good stuff. Well, look, how was uh, Ghana? So for any of the fans who don't know, you flew out. I think, sadly, your nan passed away, so you went out yeah. to celebrate her life with your family. But I think you were out there for about three, four weeks, weren't you? Oh, longer than that. Was it? Out there for about maybe seven, eight. That long? How <laughs> was it? Oh, uh, it was good, man. It was lovely. The weather was nice. You know, uh, after my grandma's funeral, went back to uh, the capital where my dad lives in and Spent some time there. Uh, the weather was lovely. There was so much to do. There wasn't really much restriction. So we were just able to live life, you know, as if it was before COVID. So it was good, man. Excellent. Nice to get some sun and relax and spend time with friends and family. All yeah. over Instagram, mate, it felt like, looking from afar, you were being treated like royalty. I think you were taken to some important people and that. Is that right? Yeah. The first few weeks was very, 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 like, it was, you know... It was tense. Like I met the uh, King of the Ashanti Kingdom. I met, you know, so many people. Like my, my dad and his friends introduced me to everyone. I think I only I never got to meet the president because they were doing the election at the time. Ah, cool. So that makes sense. But like I literally met everyone that there is to to me. I think yeah. I met Zuma Nelson. Can't forget that. Oh, that's great, cool. So. He, he was um, what weight was he? He was a world champion. He fought Jim McDonald, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a super featherweight or featherweight, one of the two, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Right, so you're back home now. Are you back in the gym and training? Back in the gym, yeah, yeah. Are all the lads back? Yeah, all the lads are back. Yeah, we're all back. Good stuff. Waiting for dates. Right, well, I'm going to bring you on to the first bit I wanted to talk to you about. Obviously, being a Peacock boy, um, and after your fight, it was the big uh, Dubois Joyce card, which everyone was looking forward to uh, for ages. It was a 50 50 fight. Um, what were your thoughts on the fight first? I'll ask you that one first. I thought it was a great fight. I was I was well entertained. <clears throat> um, you know, Daniel was a bit unlucky with you know his eye getting injured in the third round, but other than that, I, listen, I thought it was a great fight. I thought Daniel fought well. As you saw, he was up until the scorecard, so mm -hmm. he, he wasn't you know he wasn't he wasn't like levels away from Joyce. And I, I thought it was a good fight. It's just just a shame that his eye went. How is Dan? Uh, you know what? Dan's Dan, and he's, he's going to be good, but I don't know the depths of the injury. If I'm being honest, I haven't really spoke to him myself. But, you know, Dan's Dan. Dan knows how to hold his own. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's getting back. That's He's probably itching to just get back. That's that's the only that's the only thing I can imagine. He's probably itching to get back. He wants to know what's going on with his eye, how bad it is, so he can get straight back in the gym. Mm. The last I'd heard, I think they're waiting for some medical report in a week or so. Yeah, they're waiting for a medical report to see if he needs surgery or not. But I think he's leaning more towards the size of he doesn't need surgery, but... Doesn't. Hopefully, okay. you know, that's that the final word. But doesn't. I don't know. It's yeah. a natural healing process. I saw an interview with Martin the other day with one of the competitors. Yeah. Martin had said the best thing would be a natural healing process because... Yeah, of course, you yeah. think of maybe like Kel Brook, he had a problem with it. I'm not sure if it ever totally recovered. That would be the worst thing. And only time will tell. Um, yeah. if, if the eye will uh, pose a problem for him going forward. What did you think, Denzel, about the stick he got? Because I know you well, and you'll be honest, uh, I was quite upset about it, that some of the pros in the game were sort of like giving him a bit of stick for quitting and stuff like that. I, I take it that you didn't think he was quitting? You know what? I, I just feel like people just talk. Like, when if people are saying something, everyone just wants to follow and be like, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I, f I feel like no one wanted to sit down, assess the situation before speaking. Everyone just wants to be the first to say something. Because... To say he quit is crazy. His eye went in the third round. He boxed with it all the way to the 10th. He would have quit earlier if he was going to quit. The fact that he was up on the scorecards, obviously he wasn't to know that. He was up on the scorecards. He was boxing well. I thought he was I thought he was boxing well. It was a tough fight from the jump. You could see Joel Joyce was heavy-handed. He could have bowed out at any point in that fight. But he didn't. He's not he, he he got hit in the eye and it was just obviously too much now. Like it was beyond the 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 point of I can take this, so he he just he he, he couldn't continue with that eye. That's that's what it was. He couldn't continue with that eye, 
And I know it looks good. Oh, yeah, told the corner to pull him out. But it's still the same thing. If the corner pulled him out or he pulled himself out, it's the same result. The fight's done. Mm. But people want to act like an eye injury isn't serious. Like It's, it's career-threatening and it's also life-threatening. Mm. When it happened to Brooke, you know, uh, the first time, it's like, oh, you're blaming everyone else. Oh, Eddie Hearn, what's his career? His corner should have pulled him out. Golovkin is too dangerous. Duh, 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 duh. This, this, that. But when it happens to Dan, you just went out like, oh, he quit. He could have took that. He quit. He could have carried on. What, you want him to just carry on taking punches from a 19 stone man to the eye? Mm. He's still got the same eye as everyone else. Mm. If he was to have gone blind, you'd have blamed boxing. Boxing is too dangerous. And in, in this something needs to be done. He, he Listen, he decided to take his career and his life into his own hands and be like, you know what? I can't take this no more. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I just sit the fight's done. I can't take it. This is what it is. I don't think the stick was good, especially being a pro boxer. You know what we go through as fighters. You know no one's just going to come in a fight to quit. Mm. Fans, I get it. You don't understand properly. I, I get it. It's still annoying, but I get it. Pro fighters saying that, I, I, I don't respect it. Yeah, that's a really good analysis. I said that to someone the week of the fight. I can't think it was I interviewed, but I, I felt the same. Like, I'm a fan as well, right? And I've never actually boxed, you can tell from looking at me. But, yeah, exactly. But do you know what? I get why a fan might fit, think he quit because he took a knee. So a casual fan definitely would look at it like that. But actually, yeah. I found was quite harsh. Is some of the pros out there who in interviews leading up to that fight that I had done, some of them were like, this is the next best thing. He's going to be the next. Exactly. Exactly. When Joshua and Fury go into the sunset. And then they were straight on there saying he quit. And I thought, well, do you know what? Saying, saying he's quit. He was out of his depth. He's this, he's that. Come on, don't do that. Because let's be honest, before the fight, I didn't see one person apart from Joyce's team that thought Joyce was going to win. It was either a close fight or a win for Dan. I didn't, I'm not, I'll be honest with you. I did, all the polls I saw, all these things I saw, Dan, Dan was meant to win that fight. So now he's out of his depth. Oh, he quit. He blame his team, blah, blah, blah. People just talk, like I said, anyway. What? He definitely yeah. weren't out of his depth. I mean, the injury came, I think, in the third round, maybe, and it went on to yeah, the third round, carrying that injury. And as you said, on two of the three judges' scorecards, he was actually ahead. Now, it was close. I had Daniel ahead by one, if I'm honest. But either way, level one each way was... So you can't say he's out of his depth. And he was carrying yeah. that eye injury. So. And he was carrying... I couldn't score it. I was just yeah, it was watching close. it as a fan. After a while, I thought, forget the scorecard. I, this is... This is crazy. I hope Dan can pull through this. I can see his eyes getting worse, but I didn't know how bad it was. Mm. And they just thought, ah, oh, cool, it is what it is. When I saw it was up in the two judges' scorecards, I see, ah, oh, that's not, it's not the wrong result. But I, I, I didn't score it. You can't say, oh, they were going to cheat, Joe. No, no, it was that close. Any of them could have been up at that point. But at the end of the day, it's just people just like to talk. Like I said, man, they just want to be the first to say things or sound like some tough warriors. Because I guarantee you, if anyone was going through the pain that guy goes, that guy was going through, a lot of people would have been like, listen, don't put me back out there. And I'll be honest with you, Dan don't talk much. Yeah. He doesn't talk much. That pain, that eye was probably in, it's probably in bad condition. And he probably sat there and was like, no, I, I can do it. Do you know what I mean? Until he felt that shot and thought, oh, maybe I can't. Mm. So some people, like, it's just because he wasn't reacting, shouting, screaming about his eye. People would just think, oh, he's as an excuse to, to jump out, to get out of the fight. Not true. Not true. Mm. He'll be back anyway, Dan. He's a class actor in back. the right place. He's got Martin and Ray looking after him. So, um, and he'll come back and hopefully go on and win that world title. Right, let's get back to you. Um, well, before I come to you, actually, what were your thoughts of um, Billy? I don't know if you saw it. Billy, jo um, Billy Joe, uh, Chris Eubank Jr. He signed with Sourland, still ranked number one in Britain at middleweight. What were yeah. you thoughts Did you see that he said on Instagram, I'll take Liam Williams as a tune up fight? What did you think of that? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Um... That's kind of funny because uh, just not long ago he was saying he didn't know who Liam Williams was, so that's good for Liam Williams getting noticed now. <laughs> but it, that probably is that's a fight that can get made. That's a good fight. I think that'll be a good tear up. That'll be a very, 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 very good fight. But it's a fight I don't think Williams to take because he's he's in line for a world title. He doesn't really want to just miss that chance. Whether it's the fight he wins or loses, that like, he doesn't want to just you know miss his manager slot to fight Eubank. It doesn't make sense to me. He might as well just go for the title, the world title. Yeah, I think, in my own opinion, it's a risky fight. You know, Eubank Jr. is a great fighter, but so is Liam good Williams. Good fighter, very good fighter. Yeah, he's not probably going to get as much money, maybe, from fighting Liam Williams or the chance of a belt that he would against some of the other names out there, maybe the other side of the water as well. Yeah, so, true. To see 
who he comes back against. Right, so for yourself now, um, $64 million question, a lot of people, when they get that British title, mate, they want to defend it and defend it and own it outright, yeah? So that's one option. Or do we quickly say, look, let's start going for these bigger bigger names and go for European or e e even banging on the door for World Honours? Where are we going next, do you know? Uh, I, I'm not really sure. I don't really know. But it just all depends. I'd like to defend it. I'd like to win it outright. I said that before I won it. But at the end of the day, I also see the fights that's going to take me forward. I can't just be having fights that's, you know, it's not going to get me the right recognition or put me in the right position just so I can keep the belt. It just feels like it's just, you know, dra dragging on for no reason. But if there's some solid, like, there's there's a few solid fights out there that I'd, you know, like to have domestically and, um, you know, win, win that belt outright. But if it doesn't make sense, if it's just going to do, if it doesn't do me any favours as a, as a fighter, let alone the champions, as as move me forward, gain experience, and bring me closer to you know my end goal. I don't think it makes any sense. But moving forward, obviously that's. But you also want to gain the, the experience of championship fights. So maybe there's a fight or two out there that I could that I'd, I'd like to have. If it can't get made, then I probably just want to move on. Just had a text message before we came on call. Literally, it was like typical that I was interviewing you. And a friend's text me. I don't know where he's got it from, but he reckons that your fight, uh, the fight with you and Felix Cash has been ordered. Have you heard anything about that? I've heard nothing about that. I've just literally been asking in the gym today, what's what's good, what's next? They're saying, listen, don't know, we have to wait to see what happens, COVID, all these things, opponent-wise. But if that's been ordered, let's go. I'm ready. I don't mind. I'm good. That's you know that's a good thing. That's one of the fights that I'd like to have, you know, to get me ready for those future fights for like world titles and stuff or European titles, wherever it may be. But I haven't heard anything about it being ordered. I haven't really looked on social media yet. So no, I haven't seen anything. That'd be a great fight for the fans, mate. I mean, you're both undefeated. One's got the Commonwealth, one's got the British, and whoever yeah. definitely wins that, there is no argument that that person is then ready to go knocking on those European and world doors, if not both of you already. It's a bit like yeah. your heart when you thought that that was a great fight as well and it just showed that you were that next level up. So, yeah, good stuff. Well, look, before I let you go, um, I know you're a basketball fan. What team do you follow? Golden State. You're Golden State fan, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You see today who the Nets signed? Yeah, oh my day. You know, when I heard, I thought, nah, these guys are out here cheating. Can't believe it. I can't believe it. James Harden, right? James Harden with Durant and Kyrie Irving. With Durant and, and, and Kyrie Irving, yeah, I know. They've got K they've already got KD and Irving. And they added they added James Harden. Yeah, you you lost the right to be fair. Crazy. Golden Pardon? State. Golden State have done okay compared to last year. Yeah, I think Steph Curry stepped his game up. I think he's stepped his game. I think he knows he needs to carry the team now. Like it's a shame that um Clay got injured right before the season started. Like them two together back to back would have been killing the season. I don't care. Yeah. Who else who they're playing against, but Steph is doing well to carry the team right now, man. Especially with the players. We just got a bunch of rookies and sophomores, but and yeah. obviously Andrew Wiggins and a few, but it's nothing compared to what other teams have. The teams that are looking to, you know, race to the title. Good stuff. Right, well, look, I'll be down that gym. As soon as I can get down there and we're allowed out, we'll come and see you. And hopefully uh, there will be an announcement if something's been ordered and you'll be out on a card soon, mate. Great catching yeah, up with things as always. Thanks for taking time. I know you're a busy nice man. One. We'll see you soon, yeah? Thanks. Hi, nice one. Take care. Cheers, bye. Bye. Yo, bye. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars and Title, Betting Shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.